So this was all uh, fun and games, but what about more complicated graphs? I mean, you can imagine that if the graph gets more complicated, this way that I just showed will be difficult because what if I have some complicated edge, like a four cycle, say? Then I start nicely, I have this one has to be k, this one has to be k minus 1, and this one has to be in k minus 1, 2. But then what about this one? This one is adjacent to these two, so I might be tempted to say, okay, k minus 2. But I haven't forbidden these two vertices from having the same color, because they are not adjacent. If they have the same color, then only one color is forbidden. If they don't, then, then two colors are forbidden. So how do you measure all that? We need a systematic method to calculate the number of colorings of a graph. And to help us with that is the following theorem. It's not obvious from the beginning why this is helpful, but it will be, as we will see in uh, a few minutes. But first, let's look at the theorem itself. So if you have a simple graph, and an edge in your simple graph, then the number of colorings in the big graph is equal to the number of colorings in the graph with the edge deleted minus the number of colorings in the graph with the edge contracted. So let us prove this theorem. And why are we only interested in simple graphs? Well, remember last time we saw that if you have multiple edges, then since your condition is only whether or not two vertices are adjacent, it doesn't matter if you have multiple edges or just one edge. So you can just assume that your graph is simple. So how to prove this theorem? To get some notation, let's call the vertices on each side of E, V, and W. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the number of colorings of G minus E when with the edge E removed. Uh, so, so we have here V and here W, and you have some, I don't know, graph. But now we have removed E, so we do not have any edge between V and W. Uh, the graph was simple, so there was only one edge to begin with, and now we removed it. So I'm going to write the number of colorings of G minus E as P plus Q. So what are P and Q? <coughs> P is the number of colorings where V and W have the same color, and V uh, and Q is the number of colorings where V and W have different colors. Obviously, these are all the possibilities, and both of them are allowed because V and W are not adjacent. So let's reinterpret those numbers. What does Q mean? Q is the number of colorings with V and W having different colors. So these colorings are exactly those that would work if V and W were adjacent, if we put back the edge E. In other words, these are exactly the number of colorings in the big graph G, because the only difference between G and G minus E is the adjacency of V and W. So if we have uh, removed the edge, we may color V and W in the same color, but now we're looking at colorings where they are different. And so that's PGK. P is the number of colorings if V and W were the same vertex. So since we're coloring them in the same color, the number of such colorings is exactly the same as if these vertices were glued together, which is exactly the situation in the contracted graph, G uh, contracted E. So because of this, because colorings with different colors is equivalent to coloring with the vertices adjacent, colorings with the same color equivalent to colorings with the vertices are the same, we get that the number of colorings for G minus E is this red number plus the blue number. And our theorem was about the blue number, and now just by shuffling algebraically this equation, we get that PG of K is PG minus E minus PG mod E of K. So now we have this theorem that I've rewritten on the top of the page, and now we want to see how we can use it. So uh, the answer is you take your graph that you want to find out PGK4, and you reduce the number of edges by contracting and deleting edges 
until you get so easy graphs that you can see or that you have calculated before what their number of colorings is. So let's look at an example. Let's look at the graph I mentioned before, uh, which is C4. This graph. So uh, if I have my graph C4, and I have my graph E, then C4 minus E, this is this graph, so this is the path P4, and C4 contracted E, so I contract E and I identify the vertices on the end, this is K3. So uh, by the formula, the number of colorings of C4 is going to be the number of colorings of P4 minus the number of colorings of K3. And both we have already calculated. P4 is a tree, so it has this number of colorings, as you were asked to prove. And K3, well, I mean, you have this formula for Kn, so you have K options here, K minus 1 options here, and K minus 2 options here. So you get this number, and you can... Uh, calculate the parentheses and get this thing. So it looks like a polynomial in K that you get. And if you're interested in a specific K, like 17, then you just plug in 17 and calculate what this is. It will give you some quite huge number. So uh, the fact that this is a polynomial is a general fact. So for any graph G, PG of K is a polynomial in K, meaning that it is a sum of multiples of powers of k. So here we the multiples were 1, negative 4, positive 6, negative 3, and the powers were 4, 3, 2, and 1. Why is this the case in general? Well, by deleting and contracting an edge, you reduce the number of edges in the graph. So if you do this repeated times, this procedure that uh, I showed you for C4, uh, if you so we started the graph with four edges, and next step we had three edges, and we keep going until we hit zero edges, because at each step we're reducing the number of edges. So in the end, when we have zero edges, we're going to have a bunch of null graphs. And each null graph has, as we saw, the uh, PG of K is equal to K to the power R. So we're going to have sums of multiples of these things. And this proves that this is a polynomial. So we'll look at an example how this is done to illustrate this procedure. And this example will also explain what I mean by this asterisk that we ignore multiple edges. So our example will be a familiar one. It will be our complete graph K3, or if you want to call it C3, doesn't matter. So this is this graph. And let me call uh, this graph G. So now we want to calculate PG of K. And I'm going to use the formula that says that this is PG minus E of k minus p g contracted e of k. Don't get bored. This will show you a way to deal with any graph and a convenient notation. So if I call this edge e, I don't have to carry around these p's really. I mean, I know I'm calculating number of colors. So maybe let's me just replace them with drawings. So when I remove e, I get this graph. And when I contract E, I get this graph. Now, this first graph, let me leave it by this, but let's simplify the second one. So the numbers of colorings of the second graph doesn't depend on multiple edges. Remember, I only care whether vertices are adjacent or not. So I will replace this because the number of colorings uh, is independent of multiplicity of edges. 
so now I can go back to my simple graphs, uh, this one and this one. And now I have fewer edges. Here I even lost two edges because of this um, multiple edges business. But now I keep going. So for this blue graph, what does... Remember, the graph here represents PG minus E of K. So this is the number of colorings uh, in K colors of these uh, graph. And again, now I take a new edge, F. I remove F, so I get this graph. And if I contract F, shoop, and I get this graph. And for my second one, if I remove the edge, I get this graph. And if I contract it, I get just this vertex. Obviously, I, these are simple enough graphs that I can see what their chromatic, uh, what their PG of K is, but I want to go on until I really have a null graph to illustrate the point of the theorem. So this first thing, this first one, again, now I remove the edge, minus contract the edge, And then I have the second one, where again, I remove the edge minus contract the edge. So this comes from this one. And then this uh, red part is already null graph. So it is like that. So in other words, repeatedly for each step, I uh, remove and contract one edge at a time until I have no edges left. So now what are the chromatic poly, what are, is PG of K for these things? So the first one is a null graph on three edges. That's K3. The second is K square. This is K square because two vertices not edges, vertices. Here is k to the power 1, because 1 vertex. And here is the same. So this is k3 minus 3k square plus 2k. And if you simplify it further, you get that, or if you factor it rather, you get k times k minus 1 times k minus 2. So I'm continuing up here. So it was exactly what we got before, but now you see how this procedure works, and now you see how you can use it in general to systematically get the number of colorings of any graph you wish. And the steps were reducing and uh, re deleting and contracting edges. And whenever you get a multiple edge, remove all extra edges, uh, meaning to, to replace the multiple edge by a single edge and keep going.